the con. My voice just cracked because I'm having so much fun with all the girls. Right now, we have the seductious James Mansfeld. Yeah. Uh, I feel like this is like the fifth time that I've seen your face in a year. It's been great. You know what? You should appreciate every single time you see this face because the next time you'll see it, it's going to be on America's Most Wanted. Oh, I thought you were going to say it was going to be on uh, the first out season of oh, no, Drag Race. Oh, no, no, probably. I'm more likely to book America's Most Wanted than that. Oh, yes. Or cops. Cops. Um, Isn't what's, it cops, right? Yeah. What's, what's that other one? Snapped with the women who killed their husbands? Yes. I love that. And she, like, shot somebody on it? Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you are just walking around. You're having a great time. Yes, How I does am. it feel to have not had to pay for a booth? I have to say, it was honestly one of the best decisions I've ever made, was just walk around and enjoying the public. If they stop me, they stop me. If they don't, they don't. I don't care. Yeah. But I have to say, to not have to lug all my merch here from Las Vegas is a blessing. So what do you, do you, do you, what if people are like coming up to you, I want to buy something? What do you do? Go online. Oh, absolutely. Like, Well, I have a wonderful website. It's beautiful. It's still running. So be sure and just go buy a wig offline because they're always available there. <laughs> I'll probably do something next year, though. I want to do something really big and splashy for next year. Yeah. What are you, what are you thinking? I'm probably going to do, like, a pop-up wig shop or something. Yeah. Kind of lock in that brand, you know? You got to lock in that brand. And your brand has been expanding and expanding. You had Miss Tracy Martell. That and, one, yeah. Yeah, you did a collaboration with her. The Bottle Bland. Yeah, the I bottle. did that with her. That's awesome. How was that to be called on by Miss Trixie? Well, it's not surprising that Trixie Mattel needs someone to help sell her products because, well, when you're the face of a makeup company, you want someone beautiful to model it. So it just kind of seems like a no-brainer. I was a little offended I was asked so late in the game. Yeah. She should have asked me right when she started it up. <laughs> then it would have meant something. Oh, then it would have like gone gangbusters because like, she has a little bit of money now. Yeah. She could be like a multimillionaire. She could have if it was with you. Exactly. That's See? what I've been saying. See? You're uncovering so much here, Jason. I'm covering so much. And also, like, we're not in, you're not in your bathroom. I was about to say we're not in your bathroom, but our last interview, you were in the bathroom. I was in the bathroom. <laughs> 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 you cow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So we have this little bowl. It's a hole in the bowl. You stick your hand in, pull out a question, okay. and we see what you get. All right, let's do it. Give me a, get, get out of here, okay. Okay. Worst moment from your season. Mm. Hmm. This is really, really hard because I had so many, many. worst moments. <laughs> like I, Mystique. On the two episodes I was on. Mystique was here earlier and her worst moment was that they served her El Pollo Loco three times in a day. Oh no. And you have to be in Capizio tights and a corset? Mm. That is dangerous. Oh, That's playing with fire. Yeah. Let's see. My worst moment for my season would have to probably be... Hmm, if I had to narrow it down, I would say... This is really hard. Probably when I went home. Yeah. It was. No, that's not true. Honestly, the worst part about being in the workroom there and like the worst part of the season was they promised you really, really good hairspray. They're like, don't you worry, girl. We got you covered. The hairspray... It's gonna be so good. I got there, it was white rain from the drugstore. <gasps> it wasn't gonna hold anything. <laughs> so what'd you do? I had to borrow hairspray from girls that had it in their check bag, but it was like, that was a nightmare. <laughs> I came there expecting to be able to work on things. That was not the case. Well, if you would have got past the first episode, what you're saying is your wigs would have been a little. Well, I was a baby queen also when I got in there, so it was gonna be hit or Hit or miss either way. <laughs> it was gonna be crunchy no matter what. Ooh. You have been killing it in your YouTube. I love watching you do wigs. I love you taking something that is so crappy and making it so beautiful. Thank you. I could say something about your YouTube channel. Yeah. You take things that are absolutely awful and make them seem interesting. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, when it comes down to you doing the wigs, how did you even think of that concept of buying these cheap ass wigs and making them look amazing? Honestly, it was just walking through Party City one day and I saw it. I was like, well, that could probably work for something. And 
it just kind of took off from there. I didn't initially set out to do wigs. My YouTube channel was a history channel before that. It's just the wigs is the one thing that stuck. I wish there was a more interesting story, but that's honestly the way it goes. Like, you know, there's the content. Yeah. You never know what's going to work. You never know what's going to hit, what's going to mess. Have you done RuPaul's wigs yet? The ones that were in the Party City? Um, no, I have not done wigs for RuPaul, but I have done a wig for RuPaul's stand-in. Yes. I did a wig for RuPaul's stand-in for the Vegas finale, which wasn't televised. They just needed it for, like, light tests. Oh, so RuPaul's stand-in. Did RuPaul's stand-in look like RuPaul? I've never seen them. I've only worked with one stand-in they had in L.A. for The Bitch That Stole Christmas, and it was like a former basketball player in full RuPaul drag with no mug. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, he was like a working actor, and he was taking it so seriously as he sat there with like the high heels on. like. <laughs> What would you say your favorite part about being in The Bitch Who Stole Christmas was? Um, probably the casting process because I was cast as a villain without really knowing it. I thought I was going to have like some little small part. I didn't think they'd actually throw me a really big part, and they did. So that was like a really incredible moment. I was like, whoa, okay. I'm the main antagonist. Love that. <laughs> and you're on TV in a movie on VH1. Yeah. Like the whole moment like meant so much to me that it's like, it sounds kind of like cliche to sit there and drum on about how important it is, but it really was an important thing for me. Did you get to chat with Rue? Um, not really. I was right behind her when she was recording all her scenes outside. Mm -hmm. So like I could touch her. I didn't, but I could have. Like I could have shoved her. Yeah. Oh, shoved her. Like imagine that, like there was a platform right there. I could have uh -huh. pushed, but I didn't, but I had that power. TMZ headline. <laughs> RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9 first out. Were you 8? 7? What season were you? 9. I was right! Yes! You are a fan, Joseph. I am a fan. Who says you don't know anything about the drag queens you interview and that you're distant and not really there whenever you're there? <laughs> <laughs> James F Mansfield is reading me for filth. Um, so James, what is coming up down the pipeline for you? Um, I actually just got done doing the wigs for Trixie Motel. Yes. And that's going to be on Discovery Plus in June? Yes, Discovery Plus for the Pride season. That is exciting. It so is. you did Trixie's wigs. Yes, I helped out with wigs and everything on the show. I'm very happy with what it came out with. It's going to be really fabulous. Y'all just have to wait and see it. Is What is Trixie's design like? Like, is it good design? Well, she hired a designer with taste, so okay. it wasn't solely her just designing <laughs> everything. Otherwise, it would have been, you know, like the Carol King, you know, tapestry album, but with like yellow and orange all over the place, if it was her personal aesthetic. So, it wouldn't work for Taurus. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. No, it wouldn't at all. And then Trixie Motel wouldn't have been the Trixie Motel. Well, yeah. It, it would have the been the Trixie Roche Martel. Motel. <laughs> And where can everybody find you on the social medias? You can always find me at James Mansfield at YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Or you can find me in Joseph Shepard's comment section when he posts things where he's not wearing any pants. <laughs> and as we are doing with all the queens, if you've been watching these interviews, every girl that comes through, we're having them sign a lipstick tube. And okay. a random fan on the internet who comments their favorite part will win the lipstick tube. I'm very interested to see what brand of lipstick it is. Oh, well, there's nothing in the lipstick tube, but unfortunately, oh. it's chocolate. It's chocolate. <laughs> I hate it. I well, hate it. Well, thank you so much, James, for being here. Yes, thank you for having me, Joseph. It's always a pleasure to sit down with you. Always a pleasure. And I never realized just how tall you are. That's what a lot of people are saying. What do I give off? You give off, like, short man syndrome. <laughs> like a Napoleon complex, you know? That's what I think. But you're actually very tall and handsome in person. Thank you, thank you. The personality, sure. not so much, but like, very handsome, very handsome. Well, thank you so much, James. You're welcome, babe. Mwah. Mwah.